Fights to the last drop Are you gonna blow your head off? Take good aim and don't forget to duck A light sucks every Monday And all the way to Sunday But I wouldn't have it any other way I don't care how you're doing What's up or how's it hanging? I'd like to buy this world one last drink Life sucks all of the time Stick it up your sunshine And then you'll see the clouds every day And then you'll see the clouds every day And then you'll see the clouds every day Hey everybody, welcome to A Crazy Life. Uh, Jen is uh, on vacation this week down in uh, New Orleans celebrating uh, uh, New Year's. So I, you know, I, you've got me as usual, Brian. And joining me today, once again, making his triumphant return, uh, our pal Heno. Hello, <laughs> and thank you for having me again. Yep, yep, good times. Yeah, New Orleans, as, huh? Yeah, yeah. That's always an experience because, you know, she's as she's mentioned on, on the show before, she has a thing with crowds. Like, she does not like crowds. So she's going to an incredibly dense area, <laughs> people-wise, <laughs> you know, for a party event, essentially. But Wow. Yeah. Um, it, it's really interesting. You know, it tells you how far she's come because... Actually, it's true. Years ago, her and I went to Chicago Comic Con, the Wizard World Chicago... And, you know, all through the crowd, as she's mentioned on the show, like when she gets nervous, she grabs onto someone's arm or their hand or whatever. Just that's her grounding mechanism. Yeah. And, uh, you know, most of the way through that place, she was holding my arm or my hand so that, you know, you know, because there's a lot of people there. And, uh, you know, so I, I for her to even look at doing this is a huge step, let alone actually this is her second year going. She went last year. So, oh, cool. you know, that's. Like I said, that's that's her. I'll claim that for her as her win of the week. So there you go, yeah. Because that's a <laughs> massive win, yeah. Being able to go from having huge anxiety in crowds to you know, like, hey, let's do this again, you know, is pretty awesome. Yeah. So, uh, how have you been since you were on last? I know. Oh, been doing well, getting some stuff done. Actually, it's kind of funny. This this week though is is uh, like I have been for I don't know a few weeks been able to work all day uh get home you know have a little relaxed time and then and actually you know get get into mixing at night you know and you know I, i'll stay up till 11 midnight ish and then i've been getting up at 5 30 in the morning oh geez. you know and and yeah but like you know and, and honestly up you know well before six doing stuff whether it's you know releasing a podcast or just even just taking care of stuff around the house mm-hmm. and go to work do and and I've been have had no problems at all and then all it took was a week or two of pre-christmas you know the the are when everyone starts to show up and I had 3 days off and I've been barely able to get up <laughs> in the morning I'm like literally in bed before 10 <laughs> like I'm seriously and you know like all of a sudden everything switched and and it really reminded me of of times uh way back when when I used to have these um these periods of where I would just sleep all day yeah you know where I literally could not get out of bed and and that's where I can when you when you talk about you know what, what was it you said over Christmas when uh, some so it's oh you just got up that must be nice yeah you know yeah. and it's like like I just want to go up and just <laughs> put my yeah. finger upside that guy's head yeah you know like yeah, yeah. but like I I can understand that because mm-hmm. I've experienced that. Now, for me, it was usually temporary. It was only like um, a week or so. Maybe, yeah. You know, I think at the most it was two weeks. But it was literally where eyes would pop open and I'd be just like, nope. Yeah. Right back to bed. I'd literally sleep all day long. And at some point I'd wake up and think. I'd even have the moments thought that I should get up and do. Nope. Yeah. 
and that would go all day long at night. Of course, then you wake up and you're kind of in this, but you're never really awake. Yeah. It's like, I just, it, it was, it's more like you're just delirious until you fall back asleep again. <laughs> yeah. Usually what happens to me in those awake times is, um, my anxiety gets going kind of like a, you know, like it's basically it, you set yourself up into a, a the way I do it anyway is that it, it's essentially a shame spiral. Oh come on, man! You wasted the whole day. Yep. You should have got up. You should have done this. You can't do yeah. this. You know, like you're wasting your life away. You know, and it's it's just those thoughts just start going. And once they start, they race and race. And that's why sometimes, even though I'm laying in bed, I'm not actually sleeping. It's I'm trying to get those thoughts to go away. And then if I fall back asleep, that's the only way to get them to go away. So I'd rather be asleep than awake dealing with all of exactly. that. You know, and that's why I said, yeah, th- like you said, it's, that stuff, yeah. yeah, sleeping all day, it's like, yeah, you don't understand. I'm sleeping all day as an escape. I'm not sleeping all day because I need rest, you know, and I wish. Uh, you know, but I understand. When, people, when you say you've slept all day, other people are going, man, I wish I could get, you know, a couple more hours of sleep or, what, you know, I, I get why they – say it it's just you know it's really you just don't understand yeah you it, know that's so you just you you don't and, no. and we were kind of talking about that earlier about like the you know what do you say to someone at a funeral the whole you know compliments blah 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 yeah. and it really comes down to there's a certain level of life experience that gives us the ability to empathize with somebody <laughs> yeah yeah you know, and i know that's what's changed with me a lot is not like it's funny when i used to go through that i was i I was probably less sympathetic. I always mix up the empathy, sympathy thing. <laughs> but um, now that I'm, because now I figure, I figure I'm in another one of those periods. It's just not as extreme because I think a lot of why it was, um, why it was more ex- extreme to me was partially because of um, alcoholism yeah. and just you know. I could drive myself to levels that, you know, usually push – I'd be basically just pushing the co- capacity of my body. Yeah. You know, and that – and I also wasn't exactly born the healthiest human being. I mean I could have been born in a bubble. I was born with so many allergies and physical yeah. health issues and stuff. And, and you know, my immune system's not really all that great. So when I would push myself really hard, then I would – I mean I would crash and burn basically. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And I think I still do, but because I've changed my lifestyle, yeah, <laughs> um, it's not as heavy. And I've also changed the way my my you know the way my my I have better tools. Let's just say, yeah, I have mm-hmm. I have better tools to deal with these things, so they don't hit me as hard. Because I think I used to I used to fall into those funks, and I mean, and they were heavy. Yeah, you know. And so I under now looking back at it, when someone talks to me you know when i hear you talk about it i go i I know that feeling yeah i i believe that you know where other people are like "Eh," you know that they don't buy it and i'm like no it's a real deal it is so hard to describe to people when they ask you what depression is like on a day and i'm like it is seriously like you wake up and there's like a 400 pound gorilla on your chest that says if you want to get up you've got to throw me off of you first Like, that's what it takes to get out of bed a lot of these days. Not every day, but on the worst days, you know? And and people just, they just don't get it. And I'm like, I kind of want to just start a thing where I just put, like, you know, cinder blocks (laughs) or heavy weights on people and be like, okay, in order to get out of bed, you have to move, or just sit on them. I'm 300 pounds, I'll just sit on you. Be like, okay, move me off of you, then you can get, you're going to be exhausted before you're out of bed, you know? (laughs) Um, but I, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, of course I don't want to make light of people trying to understand either. And and that's the thing yeah. is, you know, you have to be careful when you're on my side to not get too upset at people if they don't understand, because I don't wish this on anyone. I don't want people to, re- I truly don't want people to understand from that, from the perspective, like you're bringing, I don't want other people to go through it. I, it yeah. would just, you know, but it's, and it's such a hard thing because I can't show you. You know, like if you break your ankle, you can see a giant swollen ankle or something and you people go, wow, that looks awful. You know, and they, hey, that must hurt, whatever. You know, yep. and you just look at a person with depression or anxiety. Or, well, sometimes anxiety you can see. You can see people like. Oh, you, yeah, the body language. Ba- yeah, balling up yeah, or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, some stuff you just, you, you can't see it. So it's hard to buy, you know, and, you know, I, I've been fighting that with doctors and different stuff over the last few years, you know. Uh, 
as I've talked to different people, you know, trying to make them understand and see, you know, and you can see when you're sitting there sometimes in these appointments, you can see that they don't believe you or they're just like, it's not that bad. You know, like you can just tell and it's like, ugh, like, you know, it's like those are the people you're like, I wish I could snap my fingers and give this to you for one day. That's all you need, yeah. you know, one bad day. And then just like, okay, now let's come back and talk about this. <laughs> yeah. You it was know? like when you talked about the, the whole disability thing and it's just like, yeah, okay, we, 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 we see that you have an issue but not enough. And it's yeah. like, come on. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm not kidding. I'm, I'm not, you know, it, it, it's, it's such an, a weird thing. I mean, you know what it is? Like seriously, I don't know if you knew that depression is the number one cause of disability in this country. It's the number one reason, but nobody wants to believe you. And you have to jump through, because no one can see it, you have to jump through twice as many hoops. Someone can fake a back injury or whatever or have a minor back injury that they just play up a little bit and get on disability way easier than I can. You know, and it's like, you know, but, you know, I mean, I, you know, everybody knows somebody who's cheated the system, basically, you know, and I'm not not advocating one way or the other here it's just that it it sucks for people with mental illnesses that you almost have to go completely off the deep end to get believed like you've almost got to kill yourself or start talking about harming others for them to listen then all of a sudden it's like oh wait a minute people won't believe how many days i wake up to where it isn't that i want to kill myself but i just don't want to exist anymore like i just don't want to be you know, <laughs> and that sucks. You know, there's no other way around that. That's not something I'd wish on anybody, you know, and that's why I'm trying, you know, through the podcast and uh, various other things, other trying ways, to, yeah. yeah, trying to get myself the opposite way. Because as I said once before, I realized I got to that point that I am literally at the point that it's either give up time or it's time to really fight. Like it's time to nothing's off the table kind of fight, you know, and so far, I'm making that decision. I don't want to make the, eh, I'm done, <laughs> you know? And that, and that's why it's really hard to be in those in-between in uh, stages. Yeah. And it's really tough. Like, I know people who, you know, who have uh, uh, borderline personality disorder. I mean, that's one of the worst oh, because, yeah. well, Seriously. you're not schizophrenic. Well, you're not bipolar. You're something kind of in-between. Some medications might work, but they but they won't. Yeah. You know, and 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 I, that's the hardest place to be in is is where you're not quite one or the other, and and like you're talking about, it's like this is where you all you know you almost have to say certain things that you don't want to say yeah. because now you you might as well just stick yeah. a giant scarlet letter. Oh on your yeah, forehead. for sure. Yeah. Well, it's like I, I well, and the thing is, they generally ask you, are you having thoughts of harming yourself? Because if you say yes, they'll say, well, what kind? And if yeah. they hear, hear certain things, they're probably going to recommend that you put yourself you know, in care for a little while so that you're not going to actually harm yourself. You know, it's yeah. always, again, you know, hearts in the right place kind of, and they're, well, they want to help. Yeah. But it's like, no, see that those are, you know, like people outside of that door still need like the same kind or a lot of that help too. You know, like I said, yeah. I don't have thoughts of harming myself. I used to, that was a long time ago, but man, there are just so many days. I actually, I, I read a tweet the other day. That uh, it was something along the lines of, um, like I saw somebody shoot themselves in the head in a movie. The look on their face as they fell to the ground um, was complete bliss, or something like that. It was something you know, I'm w- w- more wordy than they were, and I was sitting there going, "Yes!" Like if you watch a movie and you see like that, just serenity when someone's dead in a movie. That's the look I want some days. Like I want that feeling. That's not entirely self-harm, but it's pretty damn close to the door. You know, it's, those are still not good thoughts. And those are the days when I have to find distractions. I have to find ways of pulling myself, you know, getting on social media and just interacting or doing something. So I'm not sitting around to where maybe my head might keep going down that way, you know? And those are the days that I can say that to somebody, but I can't prove that to anyone. You yeah, know? that's it. And and here you could benefit from some pressure relief. Yeah. And if you could have some financial help or some sort of, you yes. know, uh, various different types of, of help that would offer you, 
you might actually be able to get out of this or yeah. find a path out of this with just even yes. a small amount of help. And, and honestly, because... that's why I'm trying to, to do it is for that reason, just yeah. enough to alleviate some pressure so that I can get yeah. better. Yeah. And then and I can and, uh, go on my own. Yeah. And unfortunately, in in a lot of cases, you have to go really far. Yeah. And, you know, and, and like where I live, you know, I live in a very conservative state. There are no, you know, drug and alcohol programs here. There's hardly any, you know, mental health programs. There's really, I mean, you basically have to either end up in front of, well, if you end up in front of a judge, yeah. it's amazing the amount of help you can get court ordered. Yeah. But short of that, you know, you, you have to check yourself into a hospital. Right. And then they hold you long enough and then they release you. Mm -hmm. And you're on your own. We don't even have a state disability fund. Yeah. You know, if you suddenly have some sort of a, you know, an infection or something where it makes it really difficult to get up and work for a couple of months, but you're, you know, you still could, you're going to get out of this. There's no, there's nothing to set up to help you for that short period of time. Yeah. And that's just the way the state is. And oh, it's man. hard because I wow. see people, I see people that, that. You know, like literally they end up in the hospital because there is no – there's nothing there's else There's no middle ground. Yeah. At yeah. all. Yeah. And that's awful. And, you know? Yeah. That's why I love – I'm, I'm starting to see in some states um, stuff like – there was something just recently here – well, not here. I'm in Michigan, but in Ohio. I live like right by the Ohio border, so I see, you know, plenty of that. Um, I saw – was it a year or two ago? I think it was that there were signs up that were for um, – uh, to put things uh, up to help people with mental illnesses, basically to give the board of mental illness and stuff to give them more tools and money so they could help more people. And I was like, finally, like this is what needed here, you know, because it for so long it's been keeping it, you know, keep it quiet, don't talk about it, or or like I've just we've just been detailing it. You can't prove it. I can't just show you. Now, now, you can do brain scans, and brain scans will show depressed minds Certain versus things, – but yeah. even then, it's eh, – you know, it's it's yeah. not 100 percent accurate. You know, there's it, – it, it, you, you know, it. I don't know. And the thing is, realistically, because of that, you know, you can jump on the internet. You can learn buzzwords and key phrases, and you could go in and probably <laughs> exploit yeah, yeah, yeah. certain systems – but like I said, I've been fighting to try to get onto some disability for th almost three years now. In that time, the whole fight is a stress. It's I have to keep going to these doctors. Exactly. And these doctors, like I said, a lot of them, you can look at them. And I know they're supposed to be subjective. You know, they're su or objective. I mean, they're not supposed to be swayed by anybody. But the way they come across is that they don't believe you. A lot of the questions that they asked me when I went for a, a, a an evaluation to a, a, a psychologist, I'm sitting there every time she asked me a question, I'm like, is there room for me to make comments? Because I don't fall in A or B. I'm actually in between those things. And that's really important. You know, like it's like how many days, you know, do you get up and uh, um, out of bed? And it's like, well, I get out of bed most days. But a lot of times it's not till mm, yeah. eight o'clock at night. I get up, I'll get up for like three hours and I go back to bed. That's not good. That's not a functioning adult, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and, and I don't know, it, it's, you know, it, it's, it's not a fun process. And because it's essentially, even though there's help at the end of the road, you've got to fight and fight and fight and fight. And then maybe they'll believe you. Like, I'm in an appeals process right now because I've already been turned down. But I yeah, think yeah. the key to it is that they there's no – they need to hear from me, I think, is the difference. They, there's no room. They don't videotape anything. They don't allow you to really write an essay or anything like that. They just it, – it's all yes or no type questions. And I don't yeah. feel those are accurate with depression and anxiety. I think that whole system is flawed, you know? So anyway, yeah, the, my tangent. There's some no, – it's, no, it's totally it, – it, it, it reminds me of a, a friend of mine that I lived with you know, 20 plus years ago where she started to – she just – when I met her, she had normal jobs. She's very intelligent, dynamic, blah, blah, blah. But there was just something – something wasn't right. 
And yeah. she started going through the process of getting onto medications, and those weren't all working either. And yeah. something, something's made it worse. And you know, it started a spiral because then you start looking for alternative. You know, you start self medicating. Yeah. You have all these different things going on, and and she's basically you can't diagnose it really. It's mm-hmm. like there's a she has an alternative thought process. Yeah. And and I used to sit there and I go I I used to judge her. Yeah. On, about this, I no longer judge. Yeah, because I've started to realize that, you know, and we're going to talk about it part of today's. Yeah, talk. I was actually going to exactly say this is a great thing. segue. Yep, <laughs> it's perfect because yeah. it's like there's these thought processes that people fall into that it doesn't show up on an interview. Nope. You know, there's these there's these fears and and you know and there there are things that I I you know luckily she has found. Um, a vocation and also I think she does get some disability too mm. um, to and and she luckily has money from family money and this and that and she's able to live yeah and not starve but right. there were periods of time where there wasn't a lot of food even yeah I mean you sure. know it was like whoa um, but 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 that's right I sit there and I go you know they're, they're it comes back to that thing that you're always talking about. Like, you know, you said, so how have I been? And I go, oh God, well, this last week I've, this was what I said on this show, by the way, it was mildly miserable. Yes. I said, that, that was the, I think you were looking for that a, a, a episode or two ago. Mm-hmm. Cause it was like, I'm not happy ish. I'm mildly yes. miserable, well, but I am way better than, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It will. It's funny because I actually, um, I have a, a short list of things that I wanted to, you know, for topics for different episodes of the show and two of them, uh, on it right now are things you said. One is mildly miserable and the other one is what <laughs> yeah. we're talking about tonight. So because you actually mentioned it on Angela's Awesome Podcast the one time. You're like, you know, the crazy life should do an episode about paralysis by analysis. And I was like, and as soon as I'm listening, I'm like, he's right. We should. So, you know, one thing before we get into that, I, I found, I don't know if you uh, read it or not. I had po- I posted on Facebook and on um, Twitter that was a woman. There's a website called The Mighty. And the website is trying to spread awareness about uh, chronic illnesses, including, you know, mental illnesses and stuff. And there's been just a lot of the content on the site is from people with these illnesses and and such. And there's tons of stuff I've read on there that it's like, you know, I read some of it and I'm like, yes, you know, which validates that I'm not making this stuff up, you know, kind of a thing. One of them was a woman talked about how her full-time job is fighting off depression and how she got on disability and it that allowed her to put her efforts into getting better kind of a thing. And how she was like, a, I think, a lawyer or a paralegal or something like that before she started fighting depression and, you know, how her, her work just trailed off to basically nothing because she, exactly. you know, and that's where yeah. I was in 10 years of, of working from high school to 10 years past that point, I missed two days of work Two. I can't imagine even working 10 hours a week right now yeah. because I don't think I would be reliable. Okay. Yeah. No one has ever said I didn't have a great work ethic in the times I worked that never appeared on any piece of paper for any review that I ever got. I was always yeah. the guy who volunteered for extra hours. I stayed late. I came in early always, you know, never, you know, rarely late. It was that kind of thing, you know? So anyway, but that this article, I'll post it again so that people can read it. But, you know, if you have some time, check out that site, The Mighty. There's a lot of really good stuff. There's one from a guy who his wife has depression, and he basically is writing a letter to her telling her originally, you know, I hated you for this and all this kind of thing. But now, whatever you need, I'm here for you kind of a thing. You can see him come around in the letter. It's 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 a fantastic piece of writing. And these yeah. are not from writers. These are just from people. Yeah, it's- Normal. Yeah, and that's what's important, and, and that's why I go to meetings mm-hmm. and and ha- and get together with groups of other people that have my same isms, mm-hmm. is because, you know, I sometimes just need to know that I'm not alone. Yes, and because because maybe wh- what I you know, I don't know where you know something small can suddenly become a bigger problem, and oh. if I can get a you know an understanding of it. And it's something that I'm not going to go talk to a psychologist about it. I just don't feel like making an appointment. But if I can just <laughs> sit down with some people and go, okay, I'm not alone with this. Yeah. All right. What are you doing 
to to get through this a little bit better. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'll try that too. Yeah. And that's why this podcast is so important, you know, yeah. at least in my opinion, yeah. is because it's like if there's some if there's relating that can happen and as a result a solution. Yes. That's why I said, even if it's someone who's been fighting for years, like I mentioned last podcast, you know, the average person I read that, you know, waits 10 years to go get help for depression. That's awful. Can you imagine having a horrible knee that you just don't deal with for 10 years? And I mean, it's awful. I don't mean like a common, you know, like every day it's like chronic knee pain and you're just like, nah, you know, and nobody believes you for 10 years. And then finally you're like, all right, I'm going to get help for this. I've had enough. You know, it's like that would be miserable for ten years, and it's like, yep, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and, and that and that um, analysis paralysis plays right yeah, into that absolutely. Stuff too. And and that's the thing because you know, uh, like we said, the topic of the show today is you know uh, paralysis by analysis or analysis paralysis or however you want to word it. <laughs> um, in, in that you know, the best way I can think of it is if you sit down at a restaurant and you have a hundred different menu items. You look at that and you just cannot make your mind up because maybe 30 things sound good to you. The waiter or server, I should say, comes over and, like, you know, you know, and you're like, ah, we need a few more minutes. And then they come back and you're like in your head, you're like, I don't want to send them off again, you know, kind of a thing. I think people go through that a lot, you know, like having too many options. But it isn't even just about that. Like no. people who get paralyzed by overanalyzing things. Like, you could give me three options, and there's times where it'll take – I'll be like, come back to me in a week, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and but it'll be – You have two. Yeah. Because I am going to basically make a pro and con list for both. Then I'm going to analyze the pro and con lists. I'm going to it's, – it's, it is such a spiral of just – I don't just neurotic. You're just a neurotic mess almost with it. And at the end of it, someone could come back to you in like an hour or two and be like, so which did you decide? And you're like, um, you know, and it's, it's awful because, you know, some people look at you like, dude, this isn't tough, you know, like, you know, hamburger or your chicken, you know? <laughs> well, and that's, and that's the thing that, that is, especially when either decision is fine. Yes. That's the part is like, yeah. everything's going to be okay. No matter yeah, what you yeah. decide. Yep. But for some reason, these two decisions <laughs> are absolutely killing you until, and and it's really hard when you you're doing this and you're like sharing a household with somebody and now you're, you know, your husband, your significant other, your whatever it is comes in and is like, all right, what, what, you know, yeah. you're still sitting here, yeah. you know, like, the kids need to go here, blah, blah, you know, right. And like, what do you and, want for dinner tonight? Or where do you want to eat tonight? And it's like, uh, it's like, come on. I want to, I'm hungry. I yeah. want to, and it's like, well, you are, choose. Are you going, yeah. Are you going <laughs> to go to the gym or are you going to take our daughter to yoga or, yeah. you know, ballet or whatever? Right. I need to know. Cause either I can, way, yeah. Either way is fine because I'll, I will cover. Yeah. But that person is now stuck. Yeah, like completely stuck, and it's legit. Yeah, and and even though the the either answer is okay, there's you, so you much can't see that far ahead of you. Yeah, at all. And the thing right. is that that translates into just many things in life. Like most of the time, life will be fine no matter what you choose. You know, life's yeah. just gonna go on whichever way you pick. And uh, you know, but you're just sitting there, and it's like. Like, you're so obsessed with getting that right answer, and it really isn't – there isn't a right answer necessarily, you know? It's like, how often do you sit down to dinner, and what you've chosen for dinner that night is the perfect thing? You're like, this tasted amazing. This is exactly what I wanted. It's not yeah. that often. You know, it happens occasionally, but there's a lot of times, eh, it tasted – or, you know, th sounded better than it tasted or – you know, or the old one, the one that always stuck out in my head for this was paper or plastic. You just watch people just get paralyzed by the paper or plastic ideal at a grocery <laughs> store. You know, like, do you want paper or plastic bags? And they're just like, well, I don't want to be that monster that chooses plastic because they're bad for the environment. And, uh, but paper, they're cutting down trees and that's not really good either. And it's just like, sir, you know, <laughs> you're like, uh, uh, I'll just carry everything, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, and that's and and that's where I think you know I was relating to it. my friend. I think that's what she went through on a regular basis. And yeah. you, know, you see, there's oh, you overthink things, and it's like, no, I don't. 
that's it's actually it's like it's almost like laughing. Yeah. It's like what do you mean stop overthinking? That's my only yeah. way I operate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like there is no like it's very rare that someone gives me two options and I immediately will answer you. Uh, you know, with one of the options because most of the time I have to think about a great. I, I mentioned a few episodes ago, uh, Tony asked me if I wanted to go to uh, the cabin with him and Jeannie and, and uh, one of our other friends. Right. And he asked me on like a Monday or a Tuesday, they were going Thursday. I think it was, you know, and I was like, give me a couple days. And I asked him a couple of questions first because I'm, you know, yeah. getting particulars out of the way in my head. Then I can make the decision based on the rest of it. And it's like, this should just be a yes or no. This shouldn't be, uh, you know, it wasn't even like, uh, hold on, there might be something coming up. Let me see how that works out. It wasn't even anything like that. There was zero yeah. in the way of it. All I had yeah. to do was answer yes or no, and I had to pull back and analyze who was going, being up there, uh, what are we going to do, how much money do I need, is there this, Is you know what I mean? It's like all this stuff, and it really shouldn't have been that hard. Most people probably would have answered fairly quickly. I think I answered him two days later, you know, <laughs> and even, even then and even I thought then, about it. Like, have... should I go? Oh, maybe I'm not going to go. You know, it didn't end it's with the, giving uh, an answer. The other thing that plays into this, I'm sure that people don't realize is you were also thinking about every time that you said yes and then bailed out an hour before. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, because that's what happens with me. Yep. Like I actually have to think about like. Okay, now is this one of those things where three hours before I'm going to suddenly feel like I don't want to go? Yeah, you know, and then how am I going to feel? And and if you've done that enough times, that's in your head. Oh, for sure. I've told people you know, it's maybe messing with you. People hate when someone says maybe, and I've told people for years. I'm like, the reason I tell you maybe is if I tell you yes, I feel incredibly pressured to go, and I feel that it puts your expectations higher. If I tell you maybe in your head, you can kind of go, well, there's doubt. If I straight out tell you no, you're not going to expect me at all. And then if there's reservations or whatever that need to be made, there's no chance I'm going to make it late, basically. Yeah. you know. So I give them maybe because I don't want to disappoint someone. They get mad at the indifference, but I'm trying to give you the best answer that I can. I'm giving you, in my head, the realist answer of the three. Yes, no, or maybe. Maybe is the realest answer <laughs> because it, it could be a dice easy. roll. Yeah, exactly. Because like yeah. you said, three hours before I could go, nope. <laughs> you know, and yeah. I've told yeah. you yes. Yeah. Now you're going to be, oh, man, well, you know, it's like it's so. And yeah. then so much of it, you know, d depending on where you're at in your um, – I don't want you know. I don't want to say you know your depression or your anxiety, but just where you are in your state of wellness that day. Yeah. You know, I, I just noticed that when when you know to use a term like when I'm when I'm buzzing at a higher energy, my ability to answer questions like that or to make decisions like that is a lot faster than yeah. when I'm real low. When I'm low, oh boy, you don't even I don't even want to I don't even want to go there. Yeah. Like yeah. it's too much energy to even start the thinking process. Right. Because that, I know I'm gonna yeah. overthink it. At that point it can kind of be like someone asking you what you want for dinner when you just ate lunch. You know, and you're sitting there going, I'm, I'm full. I don't want to think about dinner. I'm like, you know, and it's yeah. like, I don't, uh, who cares? I don't care. You know, and they're like, well, well do you want this or this? I'm like, neither sounds good. I, uh, you know, you just, again, you become what everyone sees as indifferent. And it isn't really that you're indifferent. Like, you want to make a decision. And in your head, a lot of times I will make a decision, but I don't want to share it because I know it's going to disappoint someone else or, Let's let's go in, step back a second and say that my distorted thinking tells me that I'm going to disappoint somebody. They may totally understand. You know, there are yeah. times I I mean everyone knows I suffer from migraines. I have issues with my stomach at times. So that's part of why I gave people maybes because I don't know how I'm going to feel that day. And everybody does that though. You know, most people would just deal with it the day it happens. I'm trying to set up for that, you know, yeah. and, and that's the problem, you know, is I'm trying to set the scenario to be perfect and there is no perfect, you know, there's yeah. happy ish, there's mildly miserable, there's, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's something in between. Yeah. And, and that's the thing is I'm still trying to set it up in black and white terms 
by setting it up in gray terms, I don't understand. There's no logic to it. <laughs> but I, I, things- I hate disappointing people. I always have. I really don't like feeling like I've let people down, you know? Yeah. And after you do it a, a lot of times, it, 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 it weighs on you. Yeah. You know, I know it did for me where Absolutely. I'm just like, you know, why do I, why do I even bother? Yep. And then that's not getting me into a healthy place. That's yeah. why it really is important to have your, I like to call it the tribe, your tribe around you that understands that a maybe is pretty good. Yes. You know, because your tribe understands that, 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 you know, the maybe has more of a chance of being a yes if I'm okay with the maybe. Yeah, generally if I give you a maybe, I'm I'm putting the <laughs> the over under number uh, or you know, <laughs> the, whatever. It's yeah. to the good, you know, it, it, yeah. cuz especially now if I say maybe because now I've gotten more to where if I'm not going to do something, I'm trying to get better about just saying no because listen, everybody mm-hmm. everybody ex- accepts no's. You get the word no all the time in your life. And I'm trying to get more to where I'm just straight out saying no. Um, because realistically, as weird as this may sound, it gives me more confidence when I do. Not just saying no, but just knowing, again, I, I go back to the Thanksgiving. By telling them that I wasn't going to go, it gave me a better feeling about everything because I was like, no, this isn't a good situation for me. I'm not going to even consider putting myself in a bad situation, basically. I no. I'm choosing this yeah. answer because I need to, you know, and I'm trying to get better about that, whether the answer is a yes or a no. And, and it's not so much so that I'm not indifferent. It's just that I'm trying to reestablish my confidence in myself, you know. That's about, it. Yeah. Because see where we where I well, at least for myself and in, in where I got to this is at an early age i wanted to pe- i wanted to please people i wanted people to like me i wanted yeah. to be pe- people to be happy with me so i said yes to everything right and and it's funny how it's it's very paradoxical is all that did is is create more anxiety it created <laughs> yeah. more issues it created more you know problems i was more likely to fail versus if i'm truly taking care of myself and i'm honest with myself and i say no like you're saying it builds your self worth yeah. Because, because you're putting yourself first and yeah. you're being honest. Yes, exactly. And you're not setting yourself up for failure. And it, this is not easy because most of us have had a lifetime of people pleasing. Yes. You know, we've yeah. done it our entire lives. Well, yeah, sure. I mean, you know, you work and generally most people's work is people pleasing, whether it's a retail or a customer service of some sort or whatever it is, even if you just interact with, you know, your coworkers. You're trying to please your boss, your, you know, whatever. And then there's, you know, your significant other, your kids, whatever. It's, that's what we do. I mean, we always, you don't, no one likes to disappoint people. You know, it's, it's not a fun feeling. You know, it's, you want people to include you. You want people to, uh, you know, you want to do things that other people are excited about, even if you're not sometimes, because you know what it means to them, you know, and that's where it was difficult for me because there's times where it's like, you know, somebody for whatever would want to do something. And I'm like, I really don't want to do that. You know? And it's like, those are the one times where I feel like if I say no, I'm kind of being a jerk, you know, versus no, because there's going to be a big crowd there. It's really going to bug me. Yeah. I'm not, you know, like the, there's a fine line sometimes I think in that, that would lead me one way or the other, but those type of ones, I usually would just be like, you know, no, or, you know, what was even worse is, you know, for a while, instead of giving somebody a no, I, I would just make an excuse up. You know, I I, I would, yeah. you know, say this you or that. nothing to back it up. Not really, yeah. And and it's just, and they know, you know, like, and I think, <laughs> yeah, I think that's so. the thing is that, you know, people know most of the time, but they're just like, oh, okay, you know, and, you know, uh, it's not like the times where sometimes you'll be like, oh, I don't want to for this reason. And then someone will be like, oh, that's okay. We can this. And you're like, uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, kind of going off of this a little bit. I have a, a thing here that uh, and I, I had forgotten about this and I'm glad I, I read this because it reminded me of this. I've cited Louis C.K. various times on this show because there's a lot of his stand up stuff that is so good like real life situational stuff. And um, this was a good point was the head, the headline of this article is use Louis CK 70% rule to avo- avoid decision paralysis. 
It says, we make a lot of decisions every day, and if we're honest, not all of them actually have clear-cut, objective, right and wrong answers. To get past this, comedian Louis C.K. suggests the simple rule. If you're 70% happy with the decision, just go for it. And I read that, and I was like, you know, that's so true. And, and, and because you realize that, again, you know, whatever happens, it's go- stuff's going to happen. Life doesn't, you know, and many times we think that, well, if I do this, it's pushing that giant snowball down the hill, you know. And most of the time, it really doesn't. Generally, it's more like throwing a pebble into a, you know, a lake or something. It just, you know, there may be a bit of a ripple, but it's generally not a monumental, like, avalanche or something. And I think we get caught up a lot of times in thinking that everything we do causes an avalanche or could cause an avalanche. And yes. it, And it doesn't. You know, many times yeah. it doesn't. And thinking of it in any perspective of just, I'm going to make this decision – and something's going to happen and then I'll make a decision and then something that's just all life is just yeah you know make decisions down the chain instead of uh trying to make those decisions before the situation is there you know like me I think I'm preparing but I'm really not I'm just not making a move you know yeah yeah and and one of my early on I had a what well, my first real boss that I had, and I, I would I would watch him make these decisions, and they, they came so they seemed to come so easy to him, mm-hmm. and I just I was literally like, how do you do that? Like I, it was perplexing to me, because I'm thinking, oh well, this could happen or this could happen or this could happen. It's like, and he basically said, I you know I asked him one day, and he says, I look at the information I have in front of me, and and I make the best decision I can based on that information. Now, if tomorrow a new piece of information comes along that says that that was a bad decision, well, I made the best decision with the information I had at that time. Yep. And then if I have to reevaluate that the next day, well, there's nothing – I can't go back. And there yeah. was a level of of just simplicity there yeah. and, and re, it was so rational and I'm like, huh? Yeah. Like it was, like, it was foreign to me. Right. And it's like, like, how do you, how do you not freak out and worry? Yeah. And uh, like, I've always seen myself as a very logical person. That is logic at its purest form. I'll just deal with what's in front of me. That's it. I'm just going to deal with that. And, and to like you and to me, it's just like, you're speaking another (laughs) language, man. (laughs) You know, like, did did your head just do a 360? (laughs) Yeah. But what about this? He's like, I'll deal with it if that happens. And you're like, yeah, but but you know, <laughs> and 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 you sit there, and it's this. There's one thing that it's it's taken me a long time. Well, and it's a societal thing. It's like it's not okay to fail, and it's not okay to be wrong. And I'm finally like now with with some of the um, the uh, groups that I work with, whether it's in recovery or whatever that is, we actually have the right to uh, be wrong. Mm-hmm. And and it's literally it just it states that it's okay. You have the right to be wrong. We yeah. can decide on this, and it can turn out to be the wrong thing. And it's totally okay to just say, "Well, that didn't work. Let's go back to the way it was." Yeah. And that was a huge relief. It definitely is. A, a few episodes huge. ago, when I talked about the distorted thinking, one of the things on that list was always being right. It's something that a lot of people with depression and stuff, like in anxiety issues that you always have to be right. And, and this feeds that so much because you're trying to prepare so that you never are embarrassed or wrong or have to admit that you made a wrong choice. And it's like, how many times in life have you seen or had to admit that you were wrong? So many times. If you really stop and think about it, did light, yeah. did someone pull a gun out and kill you at that moment because you were wrong? Now, I don't mean in a weird – I'm just saying was there a firing squad because, oh, this person's wrong. Let's convict them and now firing squad. Yeah, no, you you don't. You know, your day-to-day decisions, I mean, unless you're committing crimes, you're just going to keep living. You're fine. You'll be okay. You know, and it's, it's just so hard to – to grasp that you'll be okay even if you were wrong mentality and especially if you have depression and anxiety all right so what's one of the tools that one of the tools that i use when i'm wrong is 
I, I get to laugh at myself. Oh yeah. Well, it's hard to laugh at yourself when all you want to do is 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 beat yourself up. Absolutely. And and it's also very hard to go. Oh, I made the wrong decision and be okay with that when your anxiety says everyone knows I made the wrong decision. Everyone knows that you know. <laughs> yeah. What if they find out? You know. And that's the yeah. truth. It's, yeah. Whatever tools that I use on a good day. Yep. Can't even scratch the surface yeah. if you're not. If you're starting already, you know, behind the yeah, you're totally right. Be like, oh, what if they find out I'm wrong? They're gonna think I'm stupid. They won't want to hang out with me anymore, or you know, she'll think I'm stupid. She won't want to date me anymore, or you know, it's 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 always funny to me how you see, like, you know, the people who are that like they learn their word of the day and then they just put it into the wrong context all the time, kind of a thing. Those are the, <laughs> they never worry about being wrong or someone thinking they're stupid, right? And I always look at people like that, and I'm like, man, how do they do that? Like, you know, it's like I said, as a 300-pound man, I look at people just sashaying in through the mall. And they're huge, and they're wearing ill-fitting clothes. But, man, they think they are the hottest thing walking in that mall. And I'm like, how do you do that? Like, I'm, like, in 15 layers. I don't want anyone to see me. <laughs> you know, it's like, how do you just, you know, and it's that kind of a thing. It's like I always wonder, like, the people who just put themselves out there all the time, you know, and they just don't care. And then, like I said, you know, like I'm thinking about it and I go, you know, I do salty language and Tony and I make the dumbest comments about stuff at times and we don't care. We just don't care if we look dumb. We countless times on that show have said something and been like, we're probably wrong, but we're not going to bother to look it up. And we've been wrong a ton of times to where I've looked it up later and gone, Oh yeah, we were wrong about, you know, it just, we don't care. We just keep moving, you know, like, you know, if it was something harmful or something to somebody, we would, you know, maybe make a retraction kind of a thing, but it's not generally that it's just, you know, the, our last episode, we were talking about Colossus of the X-Men and we got his costume wrong. You know, we forgot that there was a yellow part in the middle of the shirt thing that he wears. We thought it was just like a deep cut V and it is, but it's filled in with, you know, yellow to like a turtleneck thing. You know, we didn't care. We just moved right on. And we owned a comic shop. Let me point that out. So we easily could have been chastised by our, you know, peers. We don't care. But in other stuff in my life, like, I'll just, you know, like, well, I don't want to put myself out there because if I'm, you know, like, I wouldn't go do karaoke. Here's a great example. I wouldn't do karaoke because I'd be too... I'm too terrified that I'll sound horrible and people will, like boo me off the stage. Realistically, nobody ever does that at karaoke. I've never been to karaoke where someone gets booed off the stage. You know, now there's a lot of in comments that people will make when someone's bad, but I've seen people that are terrible at karaoke just own it. They get up there and I mean they give it everything they have. Or if you watch anyone play rock band, same idea, singing in their car, don't care. Windows are down, and they're just singing terribly at the top of their lungs, enjoying the moment. And I'm sitting there going, uh, how can you do that? Just paralyzed, you know? <laughs> so, I don't know. If someone's got a good answer for that, you know, I'm more than, you know. Is there a switch I didn't throw in my own head? I don't know. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I don't know. I went too far that way. Um so real quick, there was this other part in this uh, thing from Louis C.K. This is actually the uh, the bit, basically, if you will. It says, these situations where I can't make a choice because I'm too busy trying to envision the perfect one, that false perfectionism traps you in this painful ambivalence. If I do this, then that other thing I could have done becomes attractive. You know, like you have two women that you'd like to ask out. Like, you know, do I want to, you know, I don't want to ask the wrong one. It's part of our consumer culture. Or I'm sorry, was it? But if I go and choose the other one, the same thing happens again. It's part of our consumer culture. People do this trying to get a DVD player or a service provider, but it also bleeds into big decisions. So my rule is that if you have someone or something that gets 70% approval, you just do it. Because here's what happens. The fact that other options go away immediately brings your choice to 80. Because of the pain of deciding is over. And, he continues... When you get to 80%, you work, you apply your knowledge, and that gets you to 85%. And then the thing itself, especially if it's a human being, will always reveal itself 100% of the time to be more than you thought. And that it, and that will get you to 90%. After that, you're stuck at 90 
but who the fuck do you think you are? A god? You got to 90%. It's incredible. <laughs> and that's so right. It, it is. How many so times true. do you make a decision yeah. and then you're like, you know, I had a better time than I thought I was going to have. You know? So, yeah. yeah. It's just the process of getting there. Yes. It, it, exactly. It's taking that first step. It's It's the hardest thing. You know, it's the hardest thing. It's why people with anxiety don't go to the doctor. They're anxious about going to the doctor. And people are just, you know, get just schedule the appointments. Like, no, you don't get it. That's the problem. That first step is so hard to take. And like this, you know, if you just sit there. I, my brother has been telling me for the last three years now that he wants a new TV. He just constantly would shop for a new TV but he still doesn't have a new TV because he's waiting to find the right TV. And I keep telling him much like in life electronics, you know, just choose the best one. Now, you know, no matter what your choice is, options are going to be available afterward. You know, like if you keep waiting for the perfect TV, you'll never get one because the technology just outpaces itself so fast. You'll just never, but he's been waiting for three years to buy a TV most people wouldn't wait that long, <laughs> you know, like you try to be an informed yeah. consumer, but that's, that's too far, you know? Yeah. And that's where a lot of these cliches come in with, you know, these ideas of, okay, you know, live in the moment you're in Yeah, more shall be revealed, you know, the, all these cliches, but once you start to accept them, then they become a little easier and helpful with these decision-making processes. You know, if yeah. if you know that always more shall be revealed at a later date, if you believe that, then then you're okay with, well, uh, you know, like right now, I'm going to do the best I can with what I've got. Yeah. Right now. Yep. And then, and, and, and of course, eventually more shall be revealed, but I'm not going to beat myself up over it. Yeah. You know, and, but those are the, the, you know, I was reading this, uh, this one, um, story, and this woman had this great line. She said, uh, I don't think it's possible for some people to stop overthinking. The only times I've succeeded have been when I was drunk or high yep. because those substances led me to the quiet car in my brain. Yep. Which is why I overindulged. And I love this, the quiet car in my brain. Yeah. You, you know, that, and I get that. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Because I, I have actively pointed out to people that over the last gap of time that the only times where I feel happy essentially are when I've got a few drinks in me because it shuts that off, you know? And yeah. that's not good, though. That's not healthy. That's not something I should strive for because, you know, eventually, you know as well as anybody, you know, that four doesn't get the job done. Now you need five or six or ten or, you know, and it just keeps yeah. – and it becomes a problem. So it's like that's – but you're right. It's like that's all you want. You want that quiet car in your head. Just, you know, my moment by the ocean, uh, you know, uh, being at that concert with Tony, just those moments where your head just – it's out. It's done. You know, it's just living in the moment. It's so – Yeah. I, I have two times in the last – Uh, 10-ish years I can remember living in the moment like just absorbing and understanding where I was right then you know and that's that's always been my goal because it's so hard for me to do I just I that's what I want I want to be able to live like that a little bit you know I'm not saying everything because you know that can be hazardous to your living as well (laughs) you know and this is where I think the the difference occurs in like you know my asking this old boss about how he makes decisions and um, that's, you know, if you look up, uh, you know, analysis paralysis, you're going to find a lot of articles that are based on business. Yes. Business management, all these things about decision making and, and blah, blah, blah. Okay. So that's the active thinking part, you know, mm-hmm. that we've talked a lot about that right now, where you're actively considering all these possibilities. But there's another level of of it's it's the i like to call it the itty bitty committee it's the jury that all of a sudden starts speaking and it's not active thought it is those voices it's and those are the voices of anxiety and fear for me those are the voice and they are different than me actually having 
um, a proactive thought process. Yes. It's very different. I don't have very much control, or let's just say I have better control over it now than I did a long time ago when I started learning some tools to deal with them. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them is meditation, um, mantras, um, whatever it is. Um, sometimes even just talking to somebody and having them give me a little bit of a you know light bulb goes off yeah. that shuts that up. Because, man, there's times where all of a sudden it's just like the committee just starts to rage and court is in session. Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing I can do about it. And nowadays, usually I can get past it within, you know, for for minor things, a half an hour or something like that. But, I mean, there are times where I would hold on to the stuff for a day. Yeah. You You know, a day later I'm still thinking about it. Yeah. Well, that's why I say even said something. even past your decision, like even past where you've oh, yeah. made the decision, you can still think about and and it can still be pre- paralyzing almost, or or you know yeah. consuming. You it may not be paralyzing you, but it's like all you think about, you know, and and uh, it's why it's so important to try to stop this. But like you said with that article, and I read the same one that you know about how people who overthink. I don't know that they can shut it off completely, but, you know, it's why, you know, my therapist has recommended, you know, when my brain gets going like that, she's like, what distracts your brain? She's like music, video games. And I was like, yeah, you know, I'll do that or I'll watch something funny, you know, a stand up or, you know, cartoon or something that I, I enjoy. And she's like, yeah, do that when you can, because, you know, that that shuts that door a little bit so that that noise goes away. You know, because that noise, it, like for me, the noise is generally doubt and yes. and self-loathing kind of stuff, yep. you know, and it's that door yep. that God, you always want to shut it. But it it's like a shadow. Generally, it follows you everywhere. Exactly. It's right behind you. It's you never can get out of the way. And that's depression. That's what it is. No matter yep. what medicine you're on, what you do, it's always going to be your shadow. Just some yep. days it's more, con- you know, it's heavier than others. You know, but this is such a, I can't think of a time where I didn't think this way, you know, even well before I had other symptoms of depression, I was this way. I wasn't a, a quick yes or no. I was always, oh, you know, I had to analyze the situation and then make my decision, you know, and uh, so uh, that's why I kind of buy into that, that it, I don't know that it's, that you can turn it off, you know? Exactly. And that's, that's where you know there are there are certain things that like i know i deal with that i have worked on really hard <laughs> to change about myself and to learn tools to do it they're never going to go away yeah. they are part of me and that's where i i like this idea of i have uh character defects and shortcomings and character defects are part of who i am they are they they can be an asset of mine and they can be a liability. Yeah. It just depends on where I allow to go. And the tools allow me to keep them, you know, there's, there's, you know, we all, there's certain things, you know, these flight or flight mechanisms, whatever, they all have some evolutional, evolutionary yeah. uh, purpose in us. Mm-hmm. But what have we done? We've put ourselves into this world that operates at a completely different level than, than we did even just a hundred and a hundred years ago. Oh yeah, definitely. The amount of stimulus we have, right? Yeah. Everything. So, so we're going to have reactions that we, that we as human beings wouldn't, and we don't change in a period of 500 years. Yeah. Not even a thousand years. Right. We're talking millennia, tens of thousands of years for us to adapt and think about how fast we've changed just in the last hundred years. And so a lot of these, these, parts of us, I think they get kind of uh, hot rotted or hot wired. And so I have to kind of accept the fact that, okay, this is going to happen no matter what. Okay. Now let's try to make it at the least amount as possible. Yeah. And by using these tools that we've talked about, which is like, Hey, there isn't a bad decision here. Whatever decision you make is going to be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever decision you make is the right one at the time. Like, yeah, no matter what you make, it's always going to be the right decision right then, because, you, you know, whether you overanalyze it or you make that decision in five seconds, there's something that made you make that decision that made you make that call. Whatever that is, 
whether it's I trusted my gut or it just felt right or I, you know, I was just like, you know what, that sounds like fun, cool, and then you just make that decision. That was the right. That was the right choice right then. You know, like you said, yeah. you may find out, you know, okay, you know what, that wasn't the best call because this happened or whatever. But you know, whatever, you wouldn't have anticipated that too. And that I find a lot of times too is that when I overanalyze and then I make my decision and I go to something that if like oh I I'm this sounds like fun I'll go do this and then it wasn't that fun most of the time the reason it wasn't that fun I never thought of so it wouldn't yeah. have mattered either way you know what I mean like I didn't think yeah. of what you know so it's like why beat yourself up for it but like you said you know if you get tools where maybe you can just turn the volume down. To where it's not so That's bad, it. you know. Yeah. So I have one, I have one place where I've experienced this uh, in in recovery, and that's with uh, working with with new people in recovery. Yeah. And when when I'm laying, you know, we're we're doing, and this is a, really has to do with twelve step work. So we're sitting here doing, you know, we're going through the steps, and the person that I'm working with wants to know why, how. Like every step of the way, they are asking, "Well, how's this going to work? Well, when's this going to happen?" Well, da, 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 da. and I get that because I was like yeah. that too. Sure. Yeah. You. So any any time we walk into a when we walk into a doctor's office, they can usually give us a time frame of like, "Okay, you got the cast on your arm now. You're going to have that on for six weeks. After six weeks, it's going to come off, and your arm's going to look like a toothpick, <laughs> right? And you know, and you you're going to have some physical, physical therapy, physical therapy yep. right?" Well, brain stuff doesn't work like that. No. It's it's usually it's a cumulative process. Yeah. So, you know, walking into to see a therapist for the first time and you want to deal with your anxiety or whatever it is and you have to have a certain faith and trust in the whole process. You're not going to get specific answers yeah. like okay, you're going to go you go home and do this, and within a week, you're going to feel like that. Yeah. It Man, that'd be awesome that if that was the case. Do you know the, one of the hardest things for me to deal with when I went to my uh, psychologist was I asked her the second time, I think it was, that I saw her. I was like, how long, you know, does this typically go on? How long is <laughs> therapy, basically? How long do you normally do this? And she's like, we keep doing this at whatever intervals you feel you need to do it until you feel successful or, or that you no longer need it. And I'm like, oh, man. Just popped off. You're yeah, just... I'm like, man, putting that all on me. You know, now it feels like I have this weight on me that, you know, I have to succeed. But it, it isn't that. It's just that's the truth is that, you know, for you, yeah. maybe it takes 10 weeks. For me, maybe it takes a year, exactly. you know, and, and that's just it. It, it's over when it's over, basically. It's not over at a set time. And that's why whenever, you know, she'll be like, when do you want to come back? And I'm like, ugh. Because she's never like, do you want to come back in two weeks? It's always, when do you want to come back? And it forces me to make a decision. A decision? Yeah. So, you know, and I don't go, you know, at first I was doing the, you know, well, what do you think? And then she always <laughs> threw it back on me. Well, what do you think? And I'm like, mm, you know, <laughs> but the process, but it's part of the process and it's good for me, yeah. you know? And now the last time I went, she was like, when do you want to come back? And I said, you know, uh, I was like, I feel like two weeks is too long. Can we do a week and a half? Absolutely. And then, you know, it was, uh, you know, and I, she, and then I thought about it and I was like, you know, over the course of a few months, I've gone from trying to get her to make the decision to where I actively realize two weeks is too long. I need it a little sooner than that, you know? Yep. So, you know, you see your that growth a back, little bit. Yeah. That comes back to the idea of like, how free do you want to be? Yes. And when you start realizing that you get rewards from something, a particular activity, it's like, okay, well, how free do I want to be? I want to be really free. So I'm going to do this as much as I can because I get relief from this or yeah. I get something. Um, but it's so hard we want that presented up front. You know, it was like the first time I, I sat down and I, I love this story. A friend of mine, he, he wanted to get sober and he sat down with another guy and they were going to work together. And he said, okay, we're going to meet um, every week here at, you know, after work at five o'clock or whatever it is on Tuesdays. And, well, um, how long do we have to do this? And he, the, his, the guy had the best answer ever. For the rest of your life, you know, <laughs> right? And, you know, 
forget the the whole like well until you feel like you're ready or blah blah blah. Yeah. No, you yeah. won't meet every week for the rest of your life. Yeah. Um but it, it made me laugh because that's that kind of stuff where where before I started to learn to have some faith in process and especially with any type of recovery process, whatever it is, um, before I had faith in that, I literally wanted you to explain everything. Yeah. So I knew all the ins and outs. So I knew whether I should, you know, because it's great. I love it. My life is totally miserable. I'm just, I'm messed up. Nothing's working. All of my decision making has turned out to be an utter and abject failure. <laughs> None of it's worked out. Yet I want to. I want to overanalyze whether this is the best thing. <laughs> yeah. <for me>. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, but the, and and I don't want to use the word that's crazy, but that's but it crazy. is. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that's why I said you that's... know, like when I was you know, I had that moment when I was like. You know, when she handed me the distorted thinking worksheets and I'm like, you know, I've always taken myself as a, a logical person. But when I start looking at this, I realize how illogical I've been, yeah. you know, and yeah. and I think I'm making the right decisions. And all this time, I'm not. I'm not even putting myself in the right place to make the right decisions. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm just making the wrong decisions to avoid potentially making the wrong decision. And it's like, that's the dumbest thing. <laughs> you know? I mean, seriously, that's like sitting at home so you don't get into a car accident. That's what that is. It's true. It's the exact, you know, and, and it's like, that. and you say that to anybody, and they're going to go, that's crazy. You got to go live your life. You can't, and it's like, no, but this way I feel safe. And they're like, yeah, yeah but <laughs> how much of a life yeah. are you living when you're avoiding it? You know, it's like. That's why I said when I said that out loud and I was just like, oh, my God, that sounds so dumb yeah. to hear it, you know? <laughs> yeah, and that's why I like this idea of like, well, yeah, my decision making has got got me into this place and to begin with, you know, and somebody, you know, says, oh, I don't want to do that because this and this and this. Oh, yeah, because everything's worked out so great <laughs> yeah. for you so far, huh? Right. You know, and that's so why I like that whole idea of like, all right, well, why don't you just try it? If you don't like it, we'll give you your misery back free of charge. Absolutely. You know? Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> but that's the, that's where, that's the, that's the real stretch here with this, you know, the, the paralysis of analysis. That's yeah. the real stretch here is to cross that bridge of, of faith. Yeah. And of I, some sort of faith. This is something like that I've wanted to get rid of for year like before I even like I said before I was dealing with depression I've always wanted to get rid of this because I hate overthinking stuff because it just eats you alive you know it's just you obsess and it's just and I could tell as a kid I was doing it and I'm just like uh you know just you could you could just feel the anxiety from it you know and it's yeah and now, you know, as, a, as an adult, I'm like, God, ugh, man, I wish I could have gotten rid of this thinking as a kid. And I tried. I tried reading books on different things and whatnot. And it just – that's yeah. why I said, like, you know, that woman said, I, I just think it's just how you're wired. And, yeah. I, you know, just like anything, it's – I think, you know, you can kind of rewire yourself. But it doesn't – you know, I don't think it's going to fully change this. So – Yeah, and it – because a lot of this goes back to real. I mean, this does go back to the core of who we are in that, you know, I know I've always looked up to people that are confident. You know, I've always admired those people that seem to have this confidence, you know, because I never yeah. was. I was always yeah. very insecure. Same here. Yep. I was always very insecure. So, you know, now, now, now throw, now throw other factors on top of it. Well, I don't stand a chance. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And it's, you know, along the way, it's like I've tried to avoid seeing the words like fixing myself. Like I see that a lot on Twitter and stuff where people are like, oh, I'm doing this. I'm trying to fix myself. And I'm like, I don't like that because to fix something, I, I don't know. I, it, we're broken, but I don't see it as fully broken. You know what I mean? It's like I just I think when you're trying to go for fix in your head, you're going for perfect. And I th it, that's just not nobody's perfect you know it's just like normal there is no actual normal it's just a perception you know and i i just sometimes i kind of wonder if people get a little too like you get obsessed with the fixing thing you know like this is broke well this is broken it's like no sometimes flaws are good you know like i was just reading earlier today about um anxiety 
how it was there were articles that it was like um how your high level of anxiety can benefit you you know in certain scenarios your anxiety because you're so aware of how anxious you get can actually kind of tip you off to a bad situation or danger like a spider sense a little bit you know and sometimes that's good it allows you to you know to flee a situation before something really bad happens and it's like yeah you know whereas most people would look at their anxiety and see a flaw you know and if you're trying to fix that you know it can have its ups and downs and there's nothing wrong with having flaws everybody does you know there's no like i said there's no perfect there's no real normal it's you know you just want to make it to where these things don't stop you from living or don't they don't make the decisions for you. You know, you, you can make your own decisions again, that kind of thing, you know? Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I guess that's all I got. Do you have anything else to add to it? Or I think that's pretty no, I think wrapping you point. Beat the hell out of that one. <laughs> yeah, certainly. Ah, uh, man. So, uh, yeah, that's, um, Oh man, I forgot to write down all the stuff. Uh Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Um. Well, anyway, Henno, do you want to tell everyone how they can find you? Or actually, let's do well, this real quick. Do you have a win for the week? I didn't even ask you. Oh my! my well, my win for the week is is uh, uh, what is going to be my win for the week? Actually, you know what? I'll do one on the topic. I did have something where I screwed something up at work. I, I just I just made a, a a mistake a week ago, and I realized it this week, and I had. That, that instant, all that, all the stuff we talked about tonight, the voices and the doubt and the fear and the, and the anxiety and the, the, what are people going to think of me and blah, blah, blah. And I just sat and I laughed. <laughs> awesome. And I laughed and then I went and I changed everything like it's supposed to be. And I went there, that's better. <laughs> You know, it's funny, like, you mentioned that with laughter. It's like, I do that all the time. Like, I'll make some, just, I'll do something, and then I'll realize it a little bit later, and I'll be like, Brian, you dummy, you know? And just, and I don't mean it in any detrimental way. It's just like a, you know, you're just laughing at the situation, because it's just like, you know, especially if it's something fairly, like, obvious. Like, you know how every once in a while you'll, you'll, put the, you'll go to put the cereal in the fridge instead of the milk? You know, exactly. something like that, you know? And it's just like, yes, uh, you know? <laughs> So, yeah. yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, always being, you know, the ability to laugh at yourself is always, always a good thing to have, you know? And it's hard, though, because I, I really wanted to beat myself up. It's yeah. like what you talked about. It's like, I just, I feel like I need to be perfect. Yeah. And it's like, I'm not. I'm nope. never going to be perfect. No, and that's great. And, you know, and that's. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's that's the. That's where I have to be. In the, and that's, that kind of. Yeah. Go ahead. I was. Okay. I was going to say that that kind of dovetails into my intention for the next three days, which is, all right, I got three days because done is better than perfect right. with music. <laughs> and I'm getting done. Yep. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm going to be done. I got a three-day weekend, and this is done. And, I, and, and I'm excited about it. I'm, I'm, you know, and that's, that's my intention Good. For, for this week is. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. It's you know when you first said that to me, like you know when we were just talking before we recorded, I think the first time when you mentioned that done is better than perfect, and I was like, oh, that's so good, that's just so good because it's so true, you know. Just just you, you know what I realized. What's that? So so I had this uh, little uh, epiphany on Christmas Eve, and I was talking to some guys and. One of the guys, we were just talking about what we have, um, what's going on next year. And one guy said, you know, I think I got some, you know, I think I have some amends to make. You know, I have some unfinished business. And and I was kind of realizing, it all of a sudden hit me. I said, this whole album thing is going to be an amends. And I mean literally an amends by the fact that the word amend means change. Yeah. Is once this is done, I am never ever going to do this ever <laughs> again <laughs> you know what i mean like all of a sudden yeah. it hit me i'm like no this is why i have to finish this it's not for some sense of obligation or duty it's to then say okay 
I am never going to take on something like this again. I'm going to say no. Yeah. I, I, and I'm going to learn <laughs> and I'm going to change. <laughs> 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 or if not, then you're just going to laugh at yourself for, you know. <laughs> then, I'm just, yeah. Yeah. then I am a glutton for punishment right. and I deserve what I get. <laughs> right. Cut to four months from now, Heno's cutting a new, <laughs> doing a new album. <laughs> yeah, piece by piece. Yeah. Hey, let's record this in eight different locations. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then try to make it sound the same. Yep. That makes Dumb perfect. Ass. <laughs> See, those are the kind of moments I was talking about. You know, you do something and you realize you're just like, why did I do this? <laughs> oh, man. My uh, win for the week is kind of it, – it's similar in this that um, I knew my nephew was going to see Star Wars Tuesday morning. And, you know, I was like, I really want to go see the movie, you know. And he's like, do you want to go with us? And I was like, yeah, you know. I was like, because I want to see it and stuff. From that minute on – I started, there's going to be a lot of people there. Do I really want to go when there's a lot of, maybe I should just wait a couple more weeks. My one brother hasn't seen it. I could just go with him. Started doing all that. Did I make the right decision and all this? Ended up going Tuesday. Had a great time. Enjoyed the movie. You know, and glad I went. You know, rather than, because otherwise if I sit there, you know, and he's like, man, you should have went with us. And then I start going through that process of, I really should have went. I should, you know, it's like, no, I just what I did by going was give myself all this peace of no of just not beating myself up after the fact. You know, I did it for one night, but then from that point on, there's no more. I'm not sitting here going, you know, and there was there were a lot of people there when we got in the theater. It wasn't that full. By the time the movie started, it was pretty well packed. You know, there was a, a group of four that came in uh, about two minutes after the previews ended there was nowhere for them to sit together. They had to split up to sit, you know? And I was, you know, I looked around a couple of times, but I didn't really get anxious about it because I think it was because my excitement for the movie overrode the anxiety of, of the crowd. Plus, you know, a theater, it, it doesn't feel like they're right on top of you the way certain things do, you know? So yeah, that was, you know, like I said, I don't regret it. I just made the decision I wish I could have gotten rid of the day of beating myself up, but I made the decision and held to it yeah. and look what happened. I'm still alive. <laughs> yes. Well, that, that's where I've kind of been like, all right, well, all right. All right. So this time it took me a day. All right. Let's try next time to maybe make it only three quarters of a day. Or yeah. Only half right. a day. Yeah, Cause my thing, a lot of times with these decisions is it's, it's, I fear the time leading up to it. Usually by the time I get to whatever it is, I'm having a good time. Yeah. You know, usually, but I get into this weird anxiety over the, the, the almost there. Yeah. Yep. Me too. That's why it's, you know, I love roller coasters, but I hate the climb to the top. It's once Great a do, analogy. Yeah. As soon as I hits the top and I know we're about to hit that, that is the You're peak. committed. Yep. That is the yeah. peak of my anxiety. But there's nothing you can do. I'm not going to jump out of the car, you know. So, and then as soon as it goes down, I am all about that roller coaster. We hit the bottom, and I'm like, let's go again. And I get on it, and it starts that climb, and I'm like, oh, God, man, this is awful. <sighs> breathe, breathe. We get to the top. Ah! You know, the whole time. And I, it's That's a great analogy. Yeah. It, it, it's And that is exact. And I... It wasn't even meant as an analogy, but it is. It's, you know, that is actually me on roller coasters. I love them, love them, love them. But it is really hard for me to go on them, especially, like, the newer ones aren't so bad because they pull you up to the top pretty quick. The old ones with that click, 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 <laughs> click. And, it, you know, it might as well be, you know, it, it's just your anxiety ratcheting up instead of the car, <laughs> you know. Oh, <laughs> like, oh, geez, come on, let's get up there, you know. <laughs> You're already now. You're you're trying to figure out the ways you can get off of this thing yeah, right yeah. now. Like, oh, okay, maybe if I do this, all right. Maybe if I <laughs> will, they stop the ride if I scream now. <laughs> Just, but yeah, I've uh, there's never been a roller coaster I've looked at and went, nope. Like every time I've been to Cedar Point, which is you know a, a big amusement park right by here. Um, every time I've gone, man, whatever it is, taller, faster, whatever, I'm like, let's go. I'm all about it. But it's, <laughs> I absolutely hate the climb up. <laughs> so, yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. 
So, all right. Well, now that we've given us or given our wins for the week, I guess now we'll wrap up the show. Uh, if you want to continue the conversation, you can uh, email the show at uh, the Crazy Life Pod at Outlook dot com or no podcast. Yeah, the Crazy Life Podcast at Outlook dot com. <laughs> That's right. Uh, you can check out our website at the Crazy Life Podcast dot Weebly dot com. Uh, you can find Jen on Twitter at Jen's Crazy Life. Uh, you can find the show at the Crazy Life Pod on Twitter. Uh, you can find me at Stunami. You can find my other podcast at Salty underscore Language or SaltyLanguage dot com. And now you can find the guy who did our intro music and has just co-piloted this episode with me, Heno, at Ida Heno. And uh, anything else you want to plug? <laughs> no, I just <laughs> always want to say that you know if. <clears throat> anyone that does listen to this and you know uh you know need someone to talk to about recovery or or even talk about a family member or a loved one or anything like that about recovery i'm always here and uh you you know you can find me on twitter at ida Heno or you know and I'm, i'll always you know i'm i'm very open it's like my name's Heno heiter you can find me on facebook right uh, um and and i'm always willing to talk to people Yep. So that's the way I am too. I, it's one of the things that since I've kind of pushed myself into being open about this and the podcasting and stuff, I've just been like, I've told people various times, like you can ask me anything. If I don't want to answer it, I'll just tell you, I don't feel like answering that or whatever, but I'm pretty open. There's very little that I still keep closed. That's, you know, I'll, I'll tell you what I've been through, what it's like, you know, and whatever. And like you said, if you just need someone to talk to, you know, please reach out to somebody, whether it's us or, you know, there's a lot of great communities online for stuff that are essentially support groups for people online. Reddit's got a bunch. There's, um, uh, was it Beyond Blue, I think, is one. Uh, there's The Mighty. I don't remember if they have a community thing, but there's just a lot of stuff out there now. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that are fighting the, st- the stigma of, of being quiet about a lot of this stuff, you know? Um, no matter what it is, whether it's a recovery from alcoholism or drugs or, or mental illnesses, there's all sorts of good information out there for you too. just, you know, be careful of don't self diagnose, uh, stuff because you can, you can treat something and you may have something that's a bigger problem. And, uh, you know, uh, so if you do need help, please go, go talk to a doctor or, you know, uh, get into a therapist or, uh, sign up for group therapy if you need to, or something, you know, um, again, there's tons of people out there to help people. You just gotta, you know, you gotta find them, you know, um, and then as always, uh, you know, we, uh, well, I'll point out once again, I'm not, we're, me and Heno are not doctors, lawyers, uh, or lawyers, geez, <laughs> <laughs> we're not lawyers. So we're just getting that out of the way. Um, no, we're not, uh, I don't know. Are you a certified therapist of any way? Cause I'm not, but no, okay. I'm not. <laughs> so, uh, if you do, like I said, if you do need someone, please go, go get someone who has, you know. Uh, the training to help, especially with mental illness, so you can get a, you know an official diagnosis and a good path for wellness. Uh, if you're in a you know really bad spot and you're thinking of suicide, you know it's like I've been there. It's awful. I understand. You know, um, contact me if you just need someone to talk to or us or whatever. You know, find someone to talk to if you can. And if you're if it's worse than that, you know, contact the suicide hotline prevention number or. Uh, call 911, tell them you're having a mental health emergency. They will generally, I believe, I think most areas they send, they'll send an ambulance to get you, uh, help or, you know, see if a friend can drive you to a hospital or something, but please don't be alone in those times, you know, find someone to help you through. I have uh, something that happened. Um, Sharon, when she got back from vacation was having some anxiety attacks and she called, uh, the therapy office that I went to. And uh, the therapist that I saw wasn't available, wasn't accepting anybody. But one of the therapists there called Sharon that night and talked to her over the phone for like two and a half hours. Awesome. Yeah. I know some do Skype. Yeah. Oh, that's even better. Yeah. It was amazing. That's awesome. It was amazing. And I just said, and the reason is because we've actually had some um, suicides, well, quite a few suicides in this valley. um, Yeah in the last couple of years. And, and so they're, they're on it. They're like, you know what, if we can, t- if talking to someone some evening outside an appointment can prevent this, we'll do it. Yeah. And I was like, yes. So, t- ne- you know, don't be afraid to call yeah. those offices. Yep. 
Yeah, most of them will tell you, like, if you're having a mental health emergency, either dial a separate number or, you know, call a hospital or something like that. They'll they'll give you some instruction on what what to do. Uh, some therapists do Skype uh, sessions, too. So if you have issues, yep. like, you know, with leaving the house or whatever, there's a lot of them that will do Skype sessions now. Or just so you don't miss an appointment or whatever, you know, that kind of thing. So. Like I said, there's a lot of help out there. Sometimes you got to look a little harder in some states. Like, you know, you mentioned that, you know, there may not be this or that, but there's probably, you know, there's something online where people can talk to you or something. So especially in suicidal, if you're feeling suicidal, you know, just like I said, please don't be alone because that's usually when the worst decisions are made. So that's, yeah, that's it. We don't want to lose anybody. So (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, I guess until next time, uh, Keep breathing.